Okay, this is going to be part five of making an Old West holster. This one's historically accurate techniques from the 1880s era-ish. So I'm going to start by taking out a nail and one of my needles and a couple of binder clips. I already got my waxed thread here. I do a little over arm's length if you're stretching your arms out. You want a lot of thread because you're going through five plies of leather right here. So that takes up quite a bit. Now for this holster, I have to turn this so you can see it. But uh, on the top here, that welt only goes up to about right there. So I'm going to come in. And, uh, let's see. I'm going to come in on the second hole. And then go in on the first hole with both of them. And make my X. Pull it through. This is called a saddler stitch or saddle stitch. I'm going to come back through the second hole again. Out with both of them. Now I'm going to be getting into my welt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through just the outer plies with this needle. I'm going to pull that all the way tight. I'm going to run the other needle through all five plies of leather, hopefully. Even though you got these pre-stitched, you glued them, so that glue sometimes kind of stops you from getting the thread all the way through. So you might, you're going to want an awl if you're going to be doing this. So you can, sometimes it's just to enlarge the holes, get the needle through. Sometimes it's even more necessary. Probably going to need them all for almost every hole, I think. You poke your hole, get both of your needles through. Maybe. Great. Needles getting bent here, that's why I'm having problems, I think. Well, do it this way. Take one, pull it tight. Take the second one. In theory, it's supposed to. Okay. I think I know what I got to do. Every time you do a new one of these, you got to kind of figure out where you're angle is where your needles have got to go right there so this is not really a fast process but it doesn't have to be I'm making this holster just in my spare time working on it a little each day through all these plies of leather is not the easiest, but that's what you deal with when you want it to look a certain way. You gotta deal with the ins and outs of making it that way. But So what I'm doing here, my holes are pretty punched, but I'm going through five plies, all of which got glue on them. So I'm taking my awl and just 
that's poking through the fibers that might be in there to catch on my needles. And kind of just uh, paving the way. I'm going to pull them real tight. I'm going to back stitch because you don't want to, you don't want just one uh, layer of thread on these top ones. Since I was making the video, honestly, I forgot about backstitching, so ordinarily I wouldn't have gone quite that far. I've only gone three or four holes, but since I was making the video and thinking about other things and I forgot, we'll just have, this is going to be extra beefed up on the top here. Needle is just not wanting to find that hole right. Well, time to switch needles. I think that needle is just a little too bent. Switch it with a different one and see if it goes better. There we go. Okay. Okay, now we're back at the top of the welt again, and we'll just stitch our way back down. You want to pull it tight away from where you're going. So kind of open up that hole for the next needle to come in. Through the wrong hole. We'll get there. Didn't go through the wrong hole. I grabbed the wrong needle. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Sometimes it goes better than this. Sometimes it goes worse. 
this is the hardest part of this entire process is sewing up this edge. You know, sometimes it goes like that, other times it's a little bit of a struggle. Pre-punching your holes does help a lot, even though it doesn't really look like it because I'm having to go through them again, but at least you got consistent holes. And uh, it's not so hard to push through because when you're pushing through five plies of leather, you don't already have a hole there. Huh. It gets hard on your hands in a real big hurry, but as far as like the force I'm having to use to get through this right now, it's not that much. I'm not, my hand doesn't feel fatigued at all, even though it looks like I'm pushing so hard, it's really not that bad. Right on my back side here is getting a little bit wonky. My needle went down too far in one hole, but you always want to punch your, if you're going to use an awl to help make your holes bigger, or if you're just going to use one in the first place, you want to make sure you're always pushing it from the front. So if you do get a little off, it's in the back where you won't see it. We're going to have to just yeah, my holes are just about right, but not quite. Really hard to get them lined up to stay that way where you're gluing it. Even though I have the nails and everything in, it's still didn't go quite as good as I was hoping for. But it's not bad. It's going pretty good right now. I'm just going to keep stitching like I'm doing the whole length of this thing. Probably finish this off camera since this would get kind of mind numbing watching me do this much longer. I've already been doing it for quite a while and there's not much else to this project until you get this part done and then there's I gotta cut slits in the skirt for where the holster itself will be going into. And then um, wet forming it to the gun itself. So the gun takes the shape of the, or so the holster will take the shape of the gun. And then uh, dyeing it. If I dip dye it, just dump my dye into a bucket or something and then just stick the whole thing in there. Then you can wet form it while it's wet with the dye and save yourself a step. Otherwise, other than what I'm doing right now, the most time consuming part is all the dry time. If you're wet molding it, you gotta let the water dry. And then if you dye it, then you gotta let the dye dry. And then the final step is always put a sealant on it of some sort. I like the leather balm with Atom Wax the best. I've used Needs Foot Oil and I've used Resoline before. Needs Foot Oil is a little messy and Resoline I found hardens the leather and makes it a little shinier than what I like. Where the um, leather balm with Atom Wax just 
kind of brings out the green and just shines it up a little, but not, not, not quite as much. So it, it just, uh, I think it makes it look pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to keep doing this. And, uh, make another video once I get to the end of this on what the next steps are. So uh, that was what I wanted to show and mention. But yeah, arm's length for your thread is a good length for any part of this process. You can always, if you're a little short or a little long, it doesn't really matter. You can overlap a couple stitches and just start with a new piece of thread if you're a little short and if you're too long obviously you can just throw it away or if it's you have enough leftovers you can use it for a smaller project but uh, that's gonna be it for this video and I will catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching